to some extent we're a bit responsive. We're thinking about how we might treat such important matters of policy as this or that. Then all of a sudden a book arrives on the desk which captures one's interest. So, for example, next week we're dealing and looking at a book which is demolishing or attempting to demolish the whole happiness industry. You know, the whole idea that we should uh, all learn how to be happy and these are the ways for us to become happy, how we should be happy in the workplace and how if we aren't happy in the workplace, perhaps we need some special psychological interventions to make us happier. Now, as soon as I saw that, I thought, great, because I am sick to death of hearing politicians talk about happiness and how we can produce happiness and what happiness means, how neuro-linguistic programming can improve people's happiness, how this or that can improve happiness. It seems to me such a weasel word, happiness, anyway. What on earth is happiness? Happiness seems to be something that happens to you while you're thinking about other things. So I wanted immediately to do this. And uh, even though there might have been quite interesting research coming out on educational achievement by working class boys in Mass South Midlands schools, I sort of push that a little bit to one side and allow what interests me to take over on the presumption, and it's a big presumption I suppose, that what interests me may interest lots of other people and not necessarily social scientists. We don't always have social scientists actually on to talk about it. I mean, I mean there's some very, very good journalists around who would have been excellent social scientists, who are excellent social scientists, so we can bring them in and we can bring in philosophers as well and we can bring in occasionally even politicians to bring them in as well. But I think if you talk about preparing, that's the first thing, as it were, just finding the subject matter. And then, as it were, working out, because it's only really 28 minutes you've got. And in 28 minutes, we usually do two subjects in 28 minutes. Now, if you put some letters in the middle, this means you've got about sort of nine or ten minutes, really, for each subject. So you've got to be careful that you pick a subject which can make sense within nine minutes. I mean, today I've been doing a programme about the nature of poverty, about how you measure poverty, poverty, how you define poverty. I mean, it's a huge subject and very rarely we devoted most of the whole program to it. But usually we're picking subjects which you can get at in about 9, 10, 11 minutes. Occasionally we take a break from that. Occasionally we think we're becoming a bit too empirical. We're becoming just a little bit too concerned with small scale studies of 20 people did this and 20 people did that. And we give over programmes to theorists. I mean, we might have a programme on Bourdieu. We've certainly had programmes on Weber, programmes on Marx. If David Harvey, the well-known Marxist historian, is in town, we'll give David Harvey the whole of the programme to talk about his latest book on how Marx would have predicted the present crisis in international capitalism. So occasionally we do that. Then occasionally we also go out. I mean, we have in previous years gone out to the University of Chicago, for example, and picked up on ethnographic research that they're doing, a particular project. Say, I remember in one case, a project on the blues bars of Chicago written by this man who showed that these blues bars in Chicago were deliberately left in a bad state. They were allowed to deteriorate, the whole facades deteriorated, in order that people who went there would believe they were authentic. So his little thesis was on authenticity in the blues in Chicago. He'd done the study, but he could then take us around and introduce us to some of the people he'd interviewed. And we've been over to South Africa and done some posters of apartheid work over there. And we've travelled into Scandinavia as well to follow up certain ethnographic projects. We've got hold of ethnographers and said, take us to where you did your work, introduce us to the few of the people that you spoke to so we can bring studies alive in that way by having the sight and the sounds, well not the sight I suppose on radio, but at least the sounds of the original environment in which the research was done. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.